Hey folks, Glenn from Ilba Folk here. Today I'm talking with Luca Gonelli, co-founder and CEO of Algo, a dynamic studio that specializes in data visualization and generative design. He walks us through the evolution of Algo from a side project to a thriving creative business. And he gives us great insights into the world of animation, design trends, and balancing client work while still leaving room for experimentation. As promised with all these episodes going forward, I'm going to try and summarize what I learned from this conversation up front to give you a better idea of what this interview is going to be like and hopefully if it will be worth your time. So for me, Luca was really great at explaining how he and his team embrace challenging projects as an opportunity for learning. Algo came out of a client brief initially where it seemed too difficult to do it the normal way. So they built tools that would allow them to make this project happen. That then led on to them actually building tools and building a product out of it. He also was very clear about how he tries to foster his own curiosity and that of his team to really make regular time for experimentation. And he emphasized the point of being adaptable being adaptable in the creative industry and how important it is to navigate changing circumstances and trends and the economy and being more adaptive opens you up to more opportunities. Luca offered a candid and inspiring perspective on building a thriving creative business. And I hope that you can learn as much from him as I did from this interview. Let's get started. Welcome to Made by Folk, Luca. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Luca, you and I, we've worked together in a couple of cases, mostly through ILO, which is kind of how I got to know you. But then I think just at that time, you had sort of hinted at, oh, I'm also working on this thing called Algo. There was already a website, but it was quite vague and secretive at the time. <laughs> and now you're much more out of that stealth mode and actually working with clients and doing some incredible work. So maybe for those who haven't come across Algo yet, you give us like the little elevator pitch of, of what Algo does. Of course, absolutely. So um, yeah, Algo is a sister studio of Illo. It was born something like five, six years ago. It's difficult to point out a moment in time. Uh, basically, yeah, we are a studio focused on data visualization and in particular in video automation. So basically our role as designers, animators, and coders is to basically build dashboards that our client can use to produce videos in a very easy way. So we are all about data-driven and generative design and uh, yeah, creating videos from data in a, at, at scale. I think for most of our listeners, so generative design is definitely like a hot topic at the moment, but maybe you could give us like a a quick idiot's guide to what is generative data driven design like it's such a nice <laughs> such a sure. nice umbrella term um Absolutely. but like for anybody who has slept under a rock for the past year <laughs> like maybe giving them like a quick intro would help be helpful sure and it's very easy to confound to confuse with with ai and stuff so yes. now what what, I, what we mean as generative design or data driven is basically the fact that we build a set of design rules um, so that each time you mm, have a new, new data or you play with, with it, with the system, um, it generates a new unique version of animation or, or visual. Uh, and so, yeah, it's all about having the data that take control of the out, final output as a, of, of, of the design. Yeah, great. And so, I'll go kind of like, maybe we could take a few steps back to how you initially started down this diverging path from, from Illo and what led to that was just like a rough idea. And then you thought I'll try it out or like, what was that in uh, the initial inception of Algo? Sure. Yeah, no, it was a, definitely a slow and continuous process. It didn't happen overnight. Uh, but yeah, I think there were sort of four uh, turning points moment uh, that led us from, of course, only ELO to having two separate companies like that. One, of course, is the first project. So the first time um, 
basically we were already interested by this topic. We have a technological background, me and Elena and Matteo and some, some early team members. And we were exploring this aspect of uh, having the variable uh, data inside of animations. But a client came in and said, okay, I want you to work every weekend, every, every night, every time there is a, a football match uh, in Italy in order to make real time animations. And we were like, okay, this sounds very interesting, but very terrible brief. Yeah. And so we just said, okay, let's, let's do this, but our own way with, with automation. And yeah, we basically didn't have anything. So I remember the first meeting going to Rome, the client was in Rome and basically faking completely the, that we already had a prototype working. We, we had Matteo on our side sending an email just at the right time when I was clicking a button. So this kind of level of uh, faking it. Um, cool. But yeah, at the end, we built it and it was working. And so, yeah, we, we created thousands of videos for, for that project during the, the football matches. And it, it all started in this way. Then at some point, we got a Bloomberg email in a spawn folder from a random Yahoo account. Uh, and this turned out to be, we, that basically they wanted to hire one of, of, of our team members uh, inside of their team. And we said, okay, no, the, the, that team member is, is working for us, but we can help you with, uh, with animation. Oh, they were trying to poach one of your animators? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. from a random, uh, you know, you receive in the spam folder uh, from a random uh, name at Yahoo dot something. So I was like, what, what is this? And, and actually it was uh, a Bloomberg employee, uh, Brandon, uh, which basically was not using the Bloomberg email because it was too complex or they had too many protocols to write to external people, mm -hmm. I don't know, firewalls mm -hmm. or stuff. So yeah, it was just using his personal email. Uh, but yeah, that turned out to be a super long collaboration with Bloomberg. We did like probably a dozen of projects uh, uh, with them since then. So it really started as a like, terrible thing at the beginning and turned out fantastic. That's so cool. at that point, uh, yeah, we, we did a few projects and then we decided to make, uh, to make a website for it uh, and then went on. Then maybe a second moment was when we started to have a dedicated team. So initially everyone was yeah, part of Illo and Algo at the same time. Of course, Algo was kind of a one single project from time to time when we had a request. Then at some point we were having more requests. So we had started to hire specifically for, for Algo. A third moment was maybe a couple of years ago when we decided to actually open a separate company for it. Uh, and um, also we continue to hire more people like our designer Kami uh, and our developer uh, Mattia. And that's the moment where the style also between Ilda and Algo started to diverge a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, I like to say that Algo is the kind of the dark side of Ilo. We are <laughs> always in dark mode and more graphic design and graphic design in motion. We are more towards this thing and less figurative, of course, than, than Ilo. And this was a, an important moment. We also built a holding company that's owning both Algo and Ilo at the same time so that they're still part of the same uh, group. Uh, yeah. It's a grown-up thing, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so it's a separate company since a couple of years now. Uh, and yeah, the, the last moment where we actually are completely um, diverging is re pretty recent. Uh, Ile and I decided that she would run Illo uh, 100%, I would run Algo 100%. So um, yeah, now we are, of course, separated team. There's just one person that is a bit in common, which is our uh, R&D director, Matteo. But yeah, the teams are completely different. We have different company cultures. Ehlers like to ride bicycles and take uh, analog photos while, uh, yeah, Algers come to work with uh, yeah, the electric scooter. And uh, yeah, if you tell them that you need to go to a shop to uh, actually give the negative and, and process the photos, they will watch you in a crazy way so yeah that's a that's a that's a fun fun thing now they're yeah we're really both both studios grown up and and fully separate amazing fully in the, independent <laughs> well, it's, glad, it's great that you've pulled that off like i think that's kind of what got us talking about algo initially was like you kind of made this this one project into a bigger project presented it as like look this is technology that could function and could work well for a client and then you saw like oh like lots of other clients could technically benefit from something similar maybe there's something there and then it naturally evolved into a fully formed business with how big is how big is the team now then like you said like four or five not nine people now nine people now no way mm -hmm. that's great nice one so algo's always been like this 
you've always spent a lot of time developing these new methods, these these new ways of generating um, data driven design. So how much time do you invest in research and development for these new ways of working? And like, how do you find that balance between the client work and potentially showing them, you know, hey, there's there's another new way there's the you know, like keeping keeping um, the team at that forefront of the technology, which is constantly changing, especially over the last year. Yeah, it's all driven by curiosity, really. And of course, it's, uh, yeah, it's part of, uh, I, I can't really stop trying all the shiny new things that come out every day. And so that's basically, and also the team is uh, has the same approach. So yeah, I have uh, like 200 tabs open on all the, to remember all of the things that I need to try. So it's really driven by, by that, not only in me, of course, but also a lot of the team members like to try new things. <laughs> um, yeah. And sometimes, of course, we are a small team, so it's not easy to go in so many directions. So we have to focus on something. Um, and concerning the relationship with client projects, yeah, I think that we try to use client projects as an occasion to try new technologies all the time. It's challenging, of course, uh, because you're maybe selling to the client something which is not 100% ready on your side and you're putting yourself a bit out of uh, comfort zone. Uh, but also I'm seeing that I really, that the projects that I love the most uh, afterwards are the ones where we push ourselves in a bit of an uncomfortable position at the beginning because we didn't know how to, how to do it. And then we end up finding out and, and yeah, that's, I think that's the, when the best work comes out, it's because of that. So yeah. With, I try to put myself and the team in a terrible position <laughs> and try to solve it, <laughs> basically. And are there any sort of new experiments that you're currently exploring that you're excited about that yeah, that you're that you're uh, allowed to share? Sure, absolutely. Now we we are doing a lot of different things uh, all at once, uh, uh, as usual. We are experimenting a lot with uh, a software called the Cavalry, um, which is basically yeah this new animation tool, which is fantastic. It's um, much more towards generative design and, and yeah, this kind of stuff. Uh, and also I'm super excited about a new project that's coming out uh, probably in these days, since we are recording before, and then this will be posted later, uh, which is called, um, is for a company called Family, which is a Web3, it's a it's a, a wallet app, a really beautifully designed wallet app. And for the first time with them, we are doing a um, wrapped campaign or year in review campaign. In this case, it's a month in review. Basically right. we are for every one of their users, we are going to produce, um, every month, every first of the month, we're going to produce a unique video that's telling you, you, uh, how you use your crypto over the month and yeah, how much you gain, how much you lost or what NFTs you, you bought and all this stuff. So it's kind Brilliant. of a recap uh, of your financial activity in the crypto world. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, if if that comes out by the time we release this, we'll try and add some uh, some links to that new project. Absolutely, yeah. And it's um, it's all possible thanks to a uh, technology that a rendering pipeline that we built internally, part of our R and D process it's, oh. that's based on Lotti, so it's super scalable. It allows us to do tens of thousands of videos or hundreds of thousands of videos and and so on. So it's uh, yeah, uh, the R and D coming into a, a real project. Incredible. Let's take a quick break because I'd like to tell you more about Current, the place to see all of your team's work. We've all been there. It's Monday morning and you're back at work after a weekend that felt this a little bit too short. You know last week the team made a ton of progress but you can't remember which files to look at, which tools to open, which Slack channel that link was shared to. Now imagine your team was using Current. Current integrates with all the tools that your team is already using to let you see all the work in one place and give you and your team better alignment. And at the end of each week, Current's AI powered newsletter automatically summarizes all the work posted and shares it with everyone so that your Monday can start a little less chaotic. Go and visit current.so and transform how you work. So you were talking about like you have that internal curiosity that's leading you to explore all these possibilities when you're building or when you built your team, how did you try 
and find that curiosity in the people that you were hiring? Did you have a method for that? Like, did you have like certain questions to try to figure that out? Or is that just a feeling uh, that you get when you're talking to yeah, people? Yeah, I, I should be more prepared to respond on this, but yeah, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I don't, we, we don't have a process. We, we like to, when we are hiring, um, fortunately, we're super yeah, fortunate to receive a lot of requests from different people in different countries. So it's really amazing to to select people and to yeah. be able to to pick the the ones that are most amazing. But of course, yeah, when interviewing, we ask some random question or we try to put you a little, uh, you know, un, I don't know, un, unusual or an un, uncomfortable position and try to see how you react to that. But it's really a feeling. And in the end, of course, you cannot, uh, it's hard to test. Sometimes I, I ask, uh, tech questions, uh, I don't know, who is the founder of Coinbase? And of course, maybe you don't know or something, but yeah, I try to do these things, but I'm, I'm not sure that's the way to go. It's probably more like a feeling. Since you're thing. working so far, so it must have uh, some positives. Hopefully. <laughs> so the way you guys have structured the business now, you are also building some tools that I think are currently still mostly in beta or in some kind of test phase, but I think the plan is to also build these tools out so that they're publicly available and that any user can technically, like I've been trying out your, your sort of podcast generation um, tool where you can upload a, a snippet and it will generate like a vocalizer, visualizer um, for you from that audio clip. Is there like a plan to move more towards those a consumer product or do you want to always have that balance between the two or th maybe to reframe a question is where do you see that balance in the future between client orientated work and then maybe consumer orientated uh, apps yeah. and products yeah no we, we like to play with this um we also i think at the beginning we made a big mistake in um marketing ourselves marketing algo as as a product or as a platform more than a studio. Huh. This was, I think, a big mistake because of course this attracted, I think, the wrong type of clients at the be very beginning. So it's something that we change uh, across the years. If, the, if you see the, the website versions, we are, every time it's more like, a, it's more of a studio. Uh, so now we definitely focus on that now. We are a team and so there's, a, of course, a design animation coding uh, happening each time. But then, of course, there is a component of a, of a platform where we are, you're using. So we always, yeah, at the end of the setup of the project, we give the client a way to generate videos on, on their own. So there's always a, a portion of that. Concerning, yeah, we like to do experiments like, like, the, like the transcript demo that you were referring uh, to um, so that people can try and can actually, yeah. Because, of course, if, if you become only B2B, only for... Uh, I don't know, a few projects, a few companies, it's, I think, less interesting. It's nice to both give back. So all of, all of these tools for now are free. Uh, and if we plan to keep them free, unless we they are built in a way that generating a lot of cost on our side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for now, we, we, we'd like to keep them free and to kind of, uh, it's a sort of a appetizer and a way for people to try the technology and maybe of course then willing to become a, a client on the algo side of course but, yeah we so like to play like a, with that like a marketing tool at this stage exactly yeah and i'm not really sure about the future we don't want like it's really competitive if we had to go in a more b2c direction of course there's companies raising millions of dollars and i'm not sure we want to go in that direction so we are definitely a studio and we focus like most of our time on on the on the client projects but yeah we like sometimes to um go a bit on the b2c just for yeah for for fun and for marketing as, as you mentioned yeah sure so like if you have any um advice for somebody wanting to move into this industry because i feel like like uh, do you feel like there are still certain um qualities that you look for in the staff that that you've been hiring for algo where like how do they differ from the people that you hired at illo like uh, do they just have like a a more technology focused mindset or do you see that is there a lot of overlap between those two teams yeah there's a bit of overlap but of, yeah of course we are 
searching. Our team is made of uh, me and, uh, and so I also act as a CEO and creative director. We have a designer, Kami, um, who is very much a graphic designer. Then we have two technical animators. So that's one of the figures that it's not so easy to find. And it's very important for us. You, they are both animators and also able to deal with code. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have two like front-end developers and data analysts that also help us build the dashboards and, and also work with the, A the APIs. So yeah, of course we are looking for people that have some skills that are specific to what we do. Uh, but yeah, and normally, for example, for the animator, technical animator role, it's interesting because it's a very much in between role between creativity yeah. and, and yeah, technology. Yeah. And so it's a, not, not so easy to find, but yeah. And this kind of automatically brings a different company culture, different uh, interest uh, in, in the team. Now we also do, separate creative retreats. So we do, yeah, the Illo trip is, no is different from the, from the Algo one. We still share the same space, the same office space. We eat together. We are like, of course, one, one big uh, team. Are you guys but, all uh, on site then, or do you have like a sort of hybrid approach? How, yeah, how you... hybrid, half and half. Uh, yeah, we, during the pandemic, we outgrow the space we had available, uh, but we love it and we don't want to change it for now. So yeah, we are basically, yeah, we have the Illo days, Monday and Thursday and Algo day, which are Tuesday and Fridays. Oh, uh, and so, That's yeah, we, way. That's yeah, a lovely story. I've only ever seen it in like video backgrounds in our conversations. Uh, someday I'll come today, visit Milan. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Today at in Torino, Torino, Torino. Oh, sorry, Torino. Oh man, I, I, why did I think No worries, that? no worries. Yeah, today uh, I'm at home, but yeah, most of the time uh, I'm in the studio. Great. Oh, so please funny. visit. For anybody that has like an idea like that first algo project, so something that was maybe Mm. driven by a client initially, but you saw, you see some potential for it to be like applicable to, to other clients or other users. What's your advice on, you know, growing that into what now is Algo, like its own sustaining business with a small team, you know, doing great work and, 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 and pushing boundaries in a lot of cases. Like, can you give any advice for anybody who's kind of like at that point in time? Sure, I, I can try. <laughs> of course, first <laughs> one is perspective. Obviously, don't do it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's. Um, I guess that the the really important question to ask yourself when you are deciding whether if you if you want this kind of side project to turn into a full business or or maybe not, which is also totally fine, is to ask yourself uh, the question if you see yourself maybe in five years or whatever to actually only run that side, yeah. that, that, that side business. Because of course, um, if the answer is yes, go for it. It's, it's going to be tough because for example, I started Illo with Ile 11 years ago now, and I don't remember so well how the first years were and, uh, yeah, the nights that we spent working and stuff. So. Yeah, of course, when you're starting something new again, it's actually restarting. Maybe the, the things that you learned that were working for, for your main uh, venture are not working anymore for this new one because it's in a different, uh, maybe slightly different place. And so, um, yeah, it's definitely, you should say yes to, uh, if you want to only do that. If not, it's totally fine. And you can, of course, keep it as a project you do from time to time. And it's maybe a way to get outside of uh, what you do every day and can yeah. be maybe frustrating, but yeah. Otherwise, if you, if you want to go the full route, I think, yeah, re replying yes to that question is the, is the best one, because of course it's going to be a bit tough and yeah, maybe you, uh, you forgot from, from what, when you, when you started. <laughs> It's like when you have kids, you forget the first couple of years and how difficult they were. You guys have decided the second. I was so thinking sure just gone exactly. <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same, the same, the same thing, the same uh, metaphor. That's perfect metaphor. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, well, as someone who's so curious about technology and also where we are currently at, but where we're moving, where do you see sort of animation and does that like the industry as a whole moving in the near future? Mm. I think it's always an interesting question to ask, not because I'm at wanting you to like pretend like you're a fortune teller, but mostly just like which areas are you kind of excited or concerned about? Where do you see some real opportunity? You know, I think you're, you have this yeah. very interesting perspective because of your curiosity for technology Thanks. and a really good understanding of the design industry. 
first thing to say this year in particular, and to trying to be very honest, uh, this year has not been great for the creative industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think where I know many, I spoke to many studio founders or freelancers and it's been tough. Uh, of course, maybe it's a bit of a kind of rebalancing after, especially in animation. I don't know if the whole creative industry, but in animation for sure, maybe it's a bit of rebalance from uh, the boom that happened during COVID, which was mm -hmm. of course counterintuitive, but, uh, and also, of course, also if you work with tech companies, there's been all these layoffs and yeah. much less uh, venture capital money due to the higher interest rates not going to talk about economics more, but basically I think, yeah, it, it was a tough year for many at the same time. Uh, it's a super interesting year because of all the things that are happening with AI and new tools. So every day there's a new shiny thing to try and, and, and those can of course in, in, in impact your workflow and make it easier or allow you to do things that you were, you weren't doing before. I can also think about cavalry, for example, the, which is present since a few years, but it's becoming very, I think, bigger now, or maybe the others also a few weeks ago, um, there was a procreate dreams that was just released, which is this new uh, animation software, especially for maybe frame by frame, but also I think very interesting. I've seen a few demos with a, with a yeah, few use cases that could be interesting. So it's time for After Effects to finally have some competition and I'm super excited about that. And yeah, all of the things that are happening around are, are good, but at the same time, it's been a terrible year. So, uh, yeah, I hope that, uh, we recover from this economic downside, uh, and in the industry and that we, yeah, can fully embrace all of these new technologies that are coming out and are very exciting. I think that's well said. And I, I support that. Like, I, I think it's not just in the animation industry. I think it's definitely also in mm -hmm. graphic and product design, I think, and many other industries, of course. Uh, and I think it does definitely have just a lot to do with companies being a little bit more cautious uh, yeah. in the current situation. So um, let's hope things calm down a little bit. We were used to this crazy world with, uh, with zero interest rate or negative interest rates and everything. We we thought that that was normal, but maybe maybe it's not. I hope that in any case we, we are seeing. Uh, we were lucky, both in Ilo and, and Algo, we 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 got projects that keep us afloat. In Ilo, there was a shift from uh, US, which uh, was a very important last year to this year, which where it became less important. But Asia came in. We did a lot lot of projects. They did a lot of project with, with Asia, mm -hmm. um, that yeah, on the other side also, we were lucky, but yeah, not, not everyone was, um, was lucky. Uh, and, but we are seeing recovery and since a few, a few months, we are seeing things are getting better. So hopefully, uh, I hope that, um, this Fingers will be a trend. all of us. Yes. <laughs> well, Luca, this was really enjoyable. I learned a hell of a lot. I think, um, the, the main takeaways for me are like. You know, you really have to embrace those client projects when they come in. And even when they seem like impossible, just like kind of like try and get the prototype to this work enough that the client buys into it and believes that you can do it. And then <laughs> deliver Always an excellent faking, product. Faking it until you're making it uh, <laughs> the end way, way of doing. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and I think just having, keeping that, that curious open-minded approach to new technology i think has really helped you out and it's definitely something that i can uh, take away from this just like embracing that because i sometimes feel guilty when i just try out every imaginable tool that i'm procrastinating but actually in the long term it often then leads to you being able to try out a different approach or a different technique so uh, it's definitely worth making time for exactly the, the tools definitely um, change the output and change what are the trends. And yeah, well, you see that with Calvary and with these new animations that are, where, are almost impossible to do um, with After Effects. But yeah, they, these are like moving, I think, the aesthetic forward. So yeah, that's always a balance between um, um, just design trends and of course trends that are that are pushed by 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 the tools. So I love that. Nice one. Well, before we end, anybody listening or watching this, where should they go to find out more about Algo and Illo? Maybe you'd like to give us a, a, a quick hint where they can find out more about your work. Sure, absolutely. So it's algo.tv, uh, the website, and all the same, same thing, illo.tv. Uh, and for and social handles, uh, we are algo.tv everywhere. Nice one. That's great. Well, anybody listening or watching, uh, please do share this uh, interview with people who, who you think might find this useful. 
I think that's definitely always the best way of us just like sort of spreading the word about these really interesting perspectives and then it helps the, the podcast out. And uh, as usual, if you want to keep up to date with any new episodes, follow us at Made by Folk on Instagram or underscore, uh, no, made underscore uh, by underscore Folk on Twitter. I'm still <laughs> waiting for that handle someday. Um, and, uh, you know, there Should will happen. Be... <laughs> I know. At some point Luca, it will happen. <laughs> at some point. And uh, Luca, thank you very much for having a chat with me today. Thanks to you. It was amazing. Ciao, Glenn. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you did, you know, it really helps if you leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It brings the podcast to a lot more people when they search for interesting topics. Or if you can think of a friend or a colleague that would find this useful, you know, sharing this on social media does a hell of a lot of good as well. Made by Focus supported by Current, the app that allows you to see all of your team's work in one place. You can find out more at current.so. All of our music is supported by Mammal Sounds. You can find a link to the whole playlist in the description. I'll be back again soon with another interesting interview. Until then, take care.